Hello everyone, my name is Zach Hilgendorf and I'm a physical geographer, geomorphologist, and educator. Now in this short lecture we're going to be going over the four primary types of stream channels in alluvial systems. Straight, meandering, anastomosing, and braided. Now, each of these channel forms corresponds to a different combination of evolutionary factors, including the underlying geology, sediment supply, grain size, slope, and discharge, to name a few. In this video, we're really only going to be scratching the surface of how these different forms come to be. But in reality, there are whole courses devoted not only to the study of uh, channel form, but of fluvial geomorphology and landform processes, and how those all impact the form and function of a channel. Now, our objective for this video is to first understand what drives the formation of the four basic channel forms, and second to understand how to tell them apart when looking at them on an aerial image. So let's dive into our four different forms of a channel. We're going to start with a straight channel. Now, straight channels are typically single channel streams. They're also relatively static, meaning that because of factors like cohesive bank material, limitations in energy, and geologic constraints, this channel's not prone to move around laterally very fast or much, unlike some of the other channel forms that we're going to see. While straight channels are often less common in nature, human modification and channelization are causing a increase in this type of channel form. Now, these, of course, are not natural channels, but they still maintain a straight position. Now, the GIF on the right is of the Lena River in Russia, a naturally straight channel. And we can see over the time lapse here that the position of this channel is virtually unchanged over the entire 25-year lapse of imagery. Now, there are some islands moving around in there, but more or less, this is a sta static stream. Now let's move on to meandering channels. Now, similar to straight channels, uh, they are typically a single channel stream. However, meandering rivers exhibit highly variable rates of channel migration that is based on the underlying materials such as silts, clays, sands, and gravels. Stream power is often more moderate in these systems, meaning that there is a moderate amount of energy within the system to do geomorphic work. Typical features in a meandering river include meander scrolls, which are linear features on the inside of a meander bend, point bars, which are sandy deposits on the apex of the inside of a meander bend, and cut banks, which are erosional banks that often alternate sides with point bars to form a progression of erosional and depositional features. Now, the GIF on the right is of the Rio Mamor in Brazil. Uh, the high migration rates visible in the GIF suggest that the underlying substrate is easy to mobilize and the power of the stream is higher. We can see point bars and brighter, or as brighter features uh, signifying sand around the river. We can also see the linear features scroll bars on the inside of meander bends throughout the entire GIF. Anastomosing channels are a little bit different. Uh, they take on a bit of a different look as well. They're multi-channel features that are relatively static. They're typically characterized by low slopes relative to their discharge rates and high discharge relative to their sediment loads. Anastomosing channels ha can have braided, meandering, or straight reaches within them. Now, the GIF on the right is from the Chippewa River in the state of Wisconsin in the United States. Over the 36-year time span, this anastomosing reach is nearly unchanged. However, we can clearly see that there are meandering channels comprising uh, the overall extent of the reach. Now, finally, braided channels are characterized by, high by a high density of wide, relatively shallow channels. Their formation is driven by the abundance of sediments, and they often are located on the edge of glaciers or in mountainous areas with high rates of slope failure feeding sediment to the stream. Braided streams exhibit high rates of energy expenditure, often have steeper slopes, and are highly dynamic. Now, the GIF on the right is from the Brahmaputra River uh, in India. This 30-year time span uh, shows just how incredibly dynamic these braided systems can be, with change apparent throughout the entire GIF. We can also see lots of bright areas surrounding the channel signifying exposed sand, which helps to hint at the sediment load in this stream and how high it really is. Now, this schematic by Shum et al. or pardon me, Shum 1981 and modified by Wool et al. in 2016 breaks down the typical appearance of the channel forms within differences of stability, bed load, overall sediment load, sediment size, and the dominant movement methods of sediment, which are suspended load, bed load, or a mix of the two. 
Please feel free to pause the video here and take time to really understand this graphic as it has a lot to unpack. I've also provided a link to this report uh, below the video. Now, we're going to go through some examples of the different channel types using Google Earth Pro. You'll be prompted to pause the video to try and discern what channel type you're looking at before I break down some of the larger pieces of evidence. Let's start in the Minnesota River in uh, the state of Minnesota in the United States. Go ahead and pause the video now uh, to try and determine what type of channel we are looking at. If you guessed meandering channel, great work. Did you notice the sequence of point bars like those circled here? What about the high curvature throughout this reach? While there's evidence of other channels, these are old abandoned channels that don't typically see much flow and are gradually filling in with sediment, unlike the Anastomosing River, which still experiences flow through all branches of the channel. Now let's look at the Lena River in Russia. Go ahead and pause the video. There isn't much to see here. If you guessed a straight channel, then you were right. Notice how straight this river is relative to the line that I drew right alongside it. While there are slight bends and deviations in the flow of the river, this scale is well over 100 kilometers and it shows you just how straight this reach of the river is. Now there are obviously underlying constraints here that we don't know just from looking at the image, but we can glean the type of form that it is. Now let's look at the Magdalena River in Colombia. Please pause the video while you decide. Did you guess it was an anastomosing river? Notice the multiple larger channels dissecting these vegetated islands circled here. Now this is clearly not a straight or meandering river. However, we don't see lots of exposed sediment uh, or a high density of smaller channels like we would expect to see in a braided river. Now let's move on to the Waimakariri River in New Zealand on the South Island. Please pause the video while you decide what type of channel we're looking at. Did you guess braided? This one's pretty easy. This is a textbook example of a braided river. Notice the high density of channels, the magnitude of exposed sandy surfaces. These are all very classic indications that we're looking at a braided stream. Straight and meandering rivers are easily ruled out here, while anastomosing rivers are much more stable, whereas the extent of the exposed sediment here suggests that it's a highly dynamic system. Now, we're looking, uh, pardon me, we're going to move on to some extra examples. So if those previous four uh, satiated your understanding and desire to look at uh, different channel forms through aerial imagery, you can go ahead and skip to the last uh, minute of the video where I, I kind of break down what we've talked about today. However, if you want to keep playing along, uh, I have four more examples for you. So hang tight and let's continue. So this is the Columbia River in British Columbia. Go ahead and pause the video. This one's a bit tougher as the stream is a little bit smaller and we're a little bit more zoomed out here. But did you guess an astomosing stream? If you did, well, you'd be correct. Some of the key indications here are these vegetated islands dissected by stable channels uh, with very little exposed sediment. And if you guessed an, or an astomosing, then you were right. Let's move on here to uh, a s unnamed stream draining uh, Hafelsjoko in Iceland. Uh, go ahead and pause the video. Pretty easy, right? This is a braided river. Notice the high density of channels, the exposed sediment, and the lack of a distinct uh, defined dominant channel. So this is draining, like I said, uh, Hofelsjökull in Iceland. This is part of the larger, larger uh, Vatnajökull uh, glacier. Uh, Jökull is glacier in Icelandic. Um, and these are pretty prominent draining glaciers across much of the country. Now we're going to move on to the Mataro River in Italy. Go ahead and pause the video. Did you guess straight river? If you're still playing along, then you're still getting points. Good job. This is a straight river. Now, it's a pretty thin straight river at that, and there is some meandering uh, occurring within the little reach of the stream here, but overall, this is uh, a pretty straight river channel. Um, 
And finally, we have the Chindwin River in Myanmar or Burma. Please pause the video. Did you guess Meandering River? Great work. Notice these big sweeping ba uh, bends of the river. Uh, point bars are also present, although it's a little bit tougher to see given the water color. Um, but all in all, this is a pretty clear meandering river system. So to wrap up, uh, in this video, we learned about the four dominant channel forms and what drives their formation. Uh, we have our straight, meandering, anastomosing, and braided rivers. Now, if you're interested in uh, more topics on channel form, uh, this classic paper by Luna Leopold and Gordon Woolman in 1954 is a great place to start, though it takes a bit more of a technical look at uh, how these systems form. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please stay tuned for more, and I will be posting in the near future. Thank you very much. Have a good day.